Hi guys, today I want to share some microphone comparisons for you. Now, the two microphones that I really want to compare are gonna be the Sennheiser HMD26 version two and the Rode HS1B. I'll give you my opinion on them. I'll let you listen to what the differences are with each, and then you can determine which one would best suit your needs. Now, I'll tell you, the reason why I wanted a head boom type microphone, head worn, right, is because I do screencasts for my clients and using something like the RE27 when I'm trying to look at the screen and go through a demo became sort of distracting and it cost me time most often than not. Now, because I wanted to make sure that I had the same quality as the RE27 or really close to it, it was sort of difficult to determine what was the best head-worn microphone for me to get, which is why I ended up with these two. So with that, I think we should get started. Now, the sound that I was going for is that of the RE27. So I'll let you listen to what that sounds like. You're now listening to me on the RE27. Now, the RE27 is the microphone that I use for my podcast, the Digital Media Branding Podcast. Um, now, I really like this sound. I really like the way that it, it interprets my voice and the characteristics of this microphone. And that is the main reason why I said, why I wanted to make sure that when I produced a screencast, it had this level of quality. And with that, I then went on the quest to try to figure out how to do it in a way that was not going to be distracting. So I'm going to now switch over to the Sennheiser HMD26 version 2. Okay guys, so now you're listening to me on the Sennheiser HMD26 version 2. It's a dynamic mic. It's got built-in um, headset, which makes it super easy, super convenient, right? Because I can monitor what it is that's happening as I'm speaking. I can then determine if my levels are too high or not high enough and so on and so forth. Now, I got to tell you, for starters, I really like this, this headset boom set. Um, this is the broadcast version. It's kind of what you see on TV. But I was really surprised in that if I am capturing directly from my headset into my mixer and then right into my computer, my mixer, even though it has 60 dB of gain, it's not enough to actually drive acceptable levels of sound out of this microphone. So what I ended up having to do is I'm using one of my FET heads so that I get that extra boost, um, about 20 dB, which then allows me to get enough going into the computer so that I can then record into Audition or whatever else it is that I might be doing. Now, I really like the fact that it's dynamic because it does a really good job at rejecting sound. I really like the fact that I can plug it directly into my mixer and monitor without having to to have you know another headset on so that I can do the monitoring and I'll get to that here in a minute and you guys will see what it, what it is that I mean and the other thing that I really like is that when I am wearing my glasses as I often do when I'm working on my computer it's actually really comfortable with these um, ear pads so overall I'm really happy with this mic now how closely does this mic sound when compared to the RE27? They're actually completely different. But it gives me a professional sound, and I think it does a good job for the screencast videos. Now, I'm going to switch back over, and I'm going to now put on the Rode um, HS1B and let you guys hear the difference.
Okay, so now you're listening to me on the Rode HS1B. A couple of things about it. First off, it's comfortable to wear. Um, it doesn't really like dig into your ear or anything. It's much less intrusive than the other microphone, as in you're not seeing as much of it. So it, it, it does a really good job because it doesn't have a monitoring solution then that means I have to either use some headphones or, or maybe some even earbuds so that I can then go ahead and, and monitor my own sounds. What are my challenges with it? Now, there are a couple. First off, this is not a dynamic microphone, which means it will capture a lot more of the, you know, like my chair squeaking or me hitting the keyboard or, or things like that. The second thing is that it uses the little micron adapter. Now, it's really fragile, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, there are times where if the cable is moved, it will actually stop capturing the audio. So it doesn't really matter how tight or, or how loose it is. Well, that's not true. It has to be tight but the tightness itself doesn't affect the reliability behind it, which is one of the reasons why I then opted to try to try these guys out, the um, Sennheiser HMD 26 version 2s. And frankly, I think that my choice moving forward, simply because I can do both the monitoring and the recording off of one microphone, one cable. In the end, it's split into two. The XLR goes on one side, the audio jacks go on the other. It's a better option for me because going this route, knowing that it's fragile and not being able to monitor unless I have another cable going through and then that possibility of maybe not capturing the audio is really not an option for me. So I, I'm now going to go back to the RE27 because, like I said, I really wanted to try to replicate or get as close as I could to the RE27 because, you know, frankly, it sounds great. It, it makes my voice sound a lot better than it actually is, I, I think. So with that, let's try the RE27 one more time. so that we can now see a comparison on what the actual sound is. And this is again, the sound that I was going for. And I then settled, not settled, but rather am settling into the Sennheiser HMD 26 version two as my choice for screencast videos, simply because I, I can move about and never drop off Whereas if I do that with the RE27, as I'm looking around, it gets to be both distracting for the person listening to the screencast, as well as me. <laughs> and hopefully you guys enjoyed this and found this useful. If you guys have any comments or suggestions as to how maybe I could have done it better or cheaper, feel free to let me know. You can email me at studio at mediaonq.com. And if you found it useful, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Until next time, I'm Carlos Quintero. Thank you for watching. Audio trends have changed a lot in the past 10 years. The sound quality and characteristics of a microphone are completely subjective. What some of us may love about a microphone, others may completely disagree. And purchasing a mic for most of us is an investment. And that's why we're gonna share our thoughts on the first dynamic microphone by Neumann, the BCM705. As a baseline comparison, we're using one of our favorite video microphones right now. The Rode NTG3 shotgun microphone. So let's head on over and check out what the Neumann BCM705 has to offer. The directional pattern for the Neumann BCM705 is hypercardioid. This microphone was designed for vocal recording and features a built-in pop filter as well as a light treble boost in the frequency response, designed to improve vocal clarity. This also means that you have to be fairly close to the microphone when you use it. 
And you have to pay attention to your microphone technique to get the best performance out of the mic. The pop screens and grills are replaceable, making it easy to clean and allowing for multiple users to each have their own screen or grill. The Neumann BCM705 also has a built-in shock mount, so you don't have to spend more cash on that accessory. This mic can be mounted on standard studio boom arms. We use the Rode PSA1 in our studio. Now let's talk price. The Neumann BCM705 sells for $699.95 at B&H or BSW. How does that price compare to the ElectroVoice RE20 or the RE27? The ElectroVoice RE20 sells for $449 at B&H or BSW, but you will also need the EV309A suspension shock mount. That sells for an additional $109, making the total go up to $558. If you went with the ElectroVoice RE27, which sells for $499 at B&H or BSW, and added the EV309A shock mount, you'd be looking at a total of $608. So we really are looking at a price range difference of $100 to $142 if you went with the Neumann BCM705. It's worth mentioning that if you're recording vocals, we would strongly recommend a pop filter, which adds another $40 to $55 to the price of each of these mics. So in today's challenge, what we want to do is we want to see just how well we can capture audio inside of a vehicle using the Rode Smart Lab. So I figured I would mount a little camera in my vehicle as I go through my morning routine, which is to go to Starbucks and get a cup of coffee. And then determine just how well or how much background noise this microphone is going to pick up. And then also to try to learn and determine whether my seatbelt is going to play a factor in some of this background noise. So I have the sound being recorded right now into the camcorder that's in my vehicle. But then also I'm recording using the smart lav into my iPhone 5. And my car is not one of the quietest. So it'll be interesting to see just how much ambient noise it picks up and background noise and everything else particularly here as I shift. It'll be a good little learning experience, a good little test here, since I want to shoot a bit um, here in a moment, or not in a moment, but this afternoon sometime, hopefully after lunch, with my wife, where we do a comparison of what these microphones or what this microphone might actually sound like or how it might stack up against another lob. And in that comparison test, what I'm going to be using or comparing against is I'm gonna go the complete opposite. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right to the top and I'm gonna use a Sankin COS 11D and then determine how much better or not you know spending that extra cash on say a sankin when your application is going to take you into locations that are not in studio or where not everything is controlled um, because i think that there are a lot of people out there who are not shooting you know big blockbuster type videos but still care about the quality of their production, even if it is on YouTube or maybe YouTube, Vimeo, Blip TV, or some of these other different services. And I think that this comparison would be good. You know, when I was shopping for logs, I tried to find some comparisons and some reasons as to why I should or shouldn't buy a specific log. And there were some really helpful videos that, you know, frankly sold me on the Sankin COS, COS 11D. And um, that's the reason why I ended up with those lobs. Prior to that, I was shooting with, uh, with Sony lobs. And when I saw the Rode 
smart log come out and I saw that it was you know essentially incredibly affordable that would allow me to you know rig up multiple logs and just hand them off to different people and and essentially get high quality audio or, or really good audio for sixty dollars I thought this is a no-brainer I need to I need to try it out um, since I've done it you know first off the smart love is awesome when compared to any internal video camera microphone there truthfully is no comparison I would go a million times with the smart lab over the internal audio. Now, <clears throat> one thing that I have noticed is that it does, at least in the studio, it picks up, um, I don't know if, if it's a lot of background noise or maybe just the gain, and maybe I need to just tweak my settings with, um, you know, on my smartphone so that, so that I don't get a lot of, um, I don't know, it's almost like a little bit of white noise. And that'll be something that I, you know, I'll have to experiment with. But I figured out and about, you know, like this, like I'm in my vehicle, I'm kind of leveling the playing field. Because other than the fact that I don't have the stereo going and that my windows are up, they're both going to be in essentially the same environment. And I look forward to that test. See how that goes. Well, I'm about to order my coffee, so for now, that's all.